Hello, so this video is to show you how to set up a new email account. If you have your own website with its own domain name, then it might also be good to have email addresses that are associated with that domain name, which generally looks more professional if you're sending and receiving emails using an account with the right name. All right, um, so we have some settings that we'll be looking at in a moment. We have four things we're going to work through. We have our settings, we have the software that we're going to use, which is known as the client. We have, um, then we're going to look at how to um, add our settings to our client, and then we're going to be able to send a test email um, to check things are working correctly. All right then, so let's have a quick look at these settings that whoever set your server up should be able to provide you with. If they don't provide you with it, you can always request that, and I'm sure they'll be happy to. All right, here we are. So these settings are for a, a test account for a person called Joe Bloggs. And his address will be joe.blogs at skywebdesign.com. And for that, we've got various different settings, including passwords, incoming and outcoming server details as well. All right, and we're going to use a, a secure system as well. All right, so that's the, the settings we're going to use. Um, to use these settings, we need to actually install and um, use them within um, a piece of software, which is known as your mail client. All right, you may already have software which will do this. Uh, um, a very popular one is Microsoft Outlook, which you may already have installed on your particular computer. If you do, much of what we talk about just now will be directly relevant to that as well. The, the, for our demonstration purposes there, we're going to use a piece of software, software called Thunderbird. And Thunderbird is a free mail client, um, and it also happens to be a very good one as well, even though it's free. So, to get a copy of that, we need to download it. To download it, we need to bring up um, a browser. I'm going to search for online. We're going to search for Thunderbird. Quick search. And as it is a popular piece of software, we'd expect it to be quite high in the, in the search results. There we go. It's actually at the top at the moment. Thunderbird software made for to make email easier. Let's um, click on that. And it immediately gives us the option for a free download, and that's what we're going to choose. We're going to click on free download, where it will then give us the option to save the file to our computer, and we need to do that. So save file, it'll start to download the file, and how long that takes will depend on how fast your internet connection is. In my case, it's relatively quick. Once it's downloaded, then we need to click on it. And then it'll start to extract the software that we just downloaded onto your computer um, and getting into a state where it can then install it. It may take a little moment, but that will depend on how fast your computer is, how long this takes. Um, if you're using a version of Windows, such as Windows 10, it may then require your permission to install this on your computer. And it'll give you this message here. And all you need to do is click Yes. All right, once that's happening, we can then close down the browser that we inst uh, that we found the software on. Uh, we don't need that anymore. And now we can click Next to install this email client. We're going to do a standard installation. I'm not going to make it my default application because I do have other ways of checking my email on this particular computer. But if this is the only software you're ever going to use to check or send, receive, to send and receive emails, then you could leave this as the default. Once you've chosen, then you can click Next. I'll tell you where it's going to install it. We'll click install. And again, it'll start to install things. How long this takes will depend on how fast your computer is. That says there. Then we have the option to immediately launch the software when we click finish. I'm going to allow that to happen. We'll click finish. And now it should launch the software, allowing us to use it. Here it is now. Okay, so we can see this is the mail client. Currently, we don't have any email addresses set up, and that's what we're going to do next. Over in the left-hand corner here, um, side here, we can see this bar, and this is where we'll show the different email accounts once they have been set up. Currently, it's empty. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this across to my left-hand side, and now we're going to take these settings here um, on the left-hand side, and um, we're going to apply them to set up our email account. On the dashboard of our client, we can see create new account. We can choose what type of account. It could be email, chat, news groups, or feeds, and we want to do email. It will try and guess our settings. Um, 
and we want to try and manually apply our settings as much as possible. At the bottom here, it says skip this and use our external email. And this is an external email account that we're going to set up within the software. So we're going to skip this for now, where it will allow us to then start applying these settings. Okay, our first thing is to add in our name. And this is how we'll appear to other people when we send an email. So if we send an email, it'll show it who it's sent from. And we're setting up an account call um, to send emails for Joe Blogs. So we're going to type in Joe Blogs, and that's where it will send from. The next thing we need to do is we need to take our email address across and put it in here. We can see across here we've got our email address there. We're going to select it. We're going to right click on it. We're going to hit copy. We're going to move across to where it needs to be, we're going to click on it, but then we're going to right click on it and click paste. And now we'll do the same for the password. You can see the password is just random characters, and that's generally the securest way of working. Again, we're going to select it, we're going to right click on it, we're going to click copy, we're going to click on the box, and we're going to click paste. And then click continue. At this stage, we'll try and guess our settings again. Um, it'll probably get them wrong. So we will need to manually check these in a moment. In fact, immediately I can see they are wrong. Also, it gives us two options to choose IMAP or POT3. IMAP is generally recommended, especially if you're going to be able to set this account up on lots of different devices. You may choose to set this email account up on your desktop computer at home. You might have it on your laptop, you might have it on your tablet, you might have it on your phone. And this would allow you to check your email on lots of different devices. If you're ever never going to use this and only ever going to check your emails on one computer at home, then you could maybe choose POT3. Generally though, we do recommend IMAP. We're going to select IMAP and then to correct some of these settings that it's guessed and that are now wrong, we're going to hit manual config. We'll be able to go through these settings and check they're all correct. First off then, we need to think about our host name. We've got an incoming and outgoing host name and they're not correct at the moment. Over here, we've got these noted down, incoming server and outgoing server, and it's the same piece of text. So we're gonna copy it, right click on it and click copy, and we're gonna select what's in the box here and hit paste to overwrite that. And I'm gonna do the same for outgoing, paste. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure we've selected the right security settings. And the security settings we're going for is SSL dash or slash TLS. And it confirms that up here. So we can select that here and select that there. The next thing we need to do is the type of authentication. We're simply using normal password. And the next thing we need to check is our port. It's actually guessed the correct ports here but we do need to make sure they're correct. And it confirms what they should be. For IMAP, they should be 993, and for the outgoing, should be 465. And that will vary depending on your particular server, but it's worth checking they are correct. And they are correct at the moment. The last thing we need to do is make sure our username is correct. Currently, that is not our username. Our username, as noted up here, is our full email address. We're gonna copy it out. We'll overwrite what's there, paste, and now we're ready to do another test to make sure these settings are working and they can connect to our, our site. We're going to click retest. It should take a little moment. This will depend how fast your connection is. The following settings were found by probing the given server. So that's correct. We can now click done and it'll take these settings and now apply them to our software, which is our mail client. There we go. Nice. So let's make this a bit bigger so we can see what's happening. So we can now we can see we've added the account of Joe Blogs over here. When I click on Inbox, it will now do download all the other folders that are relevant to this particular account. It may take a little moment, again, depending how fast your connection is. There we are. They've just come in. We can see our Drafts folder, our Sent folder, our Junk folder, and our Deleted folder. Yep. Okay then. So at this stage, we're now ready to send a test email. All right, so I'm gonna click on inbox and then I'm gonna click write new email. So we're gonna be sending from joeblogs at skywebdesign.com. We needed to send it to somebody and I set up another account. And the other account is test at skywebdesign.com. It's guessed it nicely there. Then we need to give it a subject. I'm simply gonna call it test. And we need to have a bit of text within the email. And again, I'm just gonna say test. Now we're ready to click send. For this first time, it may take a little moment. Connecting. 
delivering success. Just let it finish doing its thing. Done. To check its scent, it should now appear in our scent folder. So if we click on our scent, it may take a little moment, but then it should appear here. This will depend how fast your internet connection is. There we go. So we can see we've got an email in our sent folder being sent to test at skywebdesign.com. So from the browser's point, um, from the client's point of view, Thunderbird here is working nicely. Okay, I've actually got this test account running in the background. So I'm going to minimize this Thunderbird client down for a moment. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to open up this other older client here. This is an older email client, which is harder to find, but you can still get it if you want it, called Windows Live Mail. And look what's happened. We've just received an email from Joe Bloggs called Test. If we click on that, we'll be able to see the full email. And we can see it's from Joe Bloggs. The, the um, subject line was Test and the content was Test. So that's work. We've received an email from that account we've just set up. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to hit reply and check that our new Joe Blogs account can receive emails as well. So we're going to click reply and we're going to write tested and click send. Down here, it should work authorizing sending email. Done. OK, so we can minimize this down and um, bring up our Thunderbird client again. Oh, and look what's happened. We've just received an email. All right. A reply of the subject line test has landed in our inbox. If we click on that, we can see we've just received an email from, te um, from test at skywebdesign.com. And the content was tested. So we now know our email address, joeblogs at skywebdesign.com, is now sending and receiving correctly. Brilliant. Job done. Let's just review what we've done. So we've reviewed what settings that were provided to us by whoever set up the server. We've managed to get hold of a copy of an email client, in this case, Thunderbird. We've applied our settings to Thunderbird to set up our account and then we've sent and received a test email to make sure things are working correctly. This system is now working nicely. Hopefully you found this video useful. Um, thanks for watching.